been um you know chatting with you guys or teaching you guys for the past couple of days i have been so busy and kind of you know worked out you know trying to get my energy levels back so i started exercising and i'm skipping i'm skipping i'm skipping and i'm feeling great so that's really going to help me with my teaching because um, I'll definitely have like, a, I'll build up some energy and I'll definitely be on track. So today guys, like we're going to get into the reading now uh, so that we can um, continue and finish this chapter guys. This chapter is deep. It's, 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 it's hectic. It's a lot, uh, but we're going to finish it. We're going to finish it. My lipstick. But we are not here for the lipstick. Okay? We're not here for the lipstick. Okay. So I want to greet you guys all in the name of Jesus. And I want to say to you guys, tonight you will be blessed with the word. We are here to teach the word. The Faith Ministry Church is all about values, giving, serving. We are here to speak in faith. We are here to use our tongues for the best. 
we are here to manifest the greatness of what God created us to do. And so we will continue to teach the word, to be in the word, to believe God for the things that are meant to be ours according to the gospel. So today we just want to honor you, Father God. I'm praying right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I just want to honor you, Father God, and everybody else that is um, watching on this channel right now as we speak, Father God. We bless them. We pray for them. We we, we speak life into them. We speak success into them. We speak joy. We speak happiness. We speak faith into their lives. We speak, Father God, generosity, gratitude, kindness. We speak, Father God, uh, edification into their lives, Father God, that may you increase in them and may you increase the faith, Father God, so that we are able to move forward in this thing called life and in this thing called creation. Because faith is part of the process of creation and the ministry of faith is here to do that we are here to create father god and we are doing it for you in the mighty name of jesus bless this teaching amen 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 guys okay so let's get to the word so today guys now nah, like i'm i'm gonna do it like i usually do um yeah we're gonna we're gonna speak the word. We're gonna speak the word. We're gonna get straight to it. Okay. So we last ended go verse ten, right? Now we are continuing with verse eleven. It says, "For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gifts, to the end ye may be established." To the end. Sorry, let me just get this lighting right. Just hold on for me. Yes, so to the end ye may be established. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gifts. To the end ye may be established. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for the word. Now, straight to the point. Right. So I'm realizing that as I go with my teaching, I will be getting straight to the point so that, uh, you know, we do this thing and it moves. It has rhythm. OK, so the first couple of words in verse 11 says, for I long to see you. Remember, we are speaking about faith. Remember, we are speaking about going on the journey, longing to go to Rome, going on the journey called purpose. And the journey of purpose is the things of God, is the gospel of God, is serving the Lord, is serving Jesus Christ. We are here to do the work. We're here to do the work of our Lord Jesus Christ and our God. So the first verse says, for I long to see you, right? So immediately Paul is teaching the purpose of God. God is saying, for I long to see you, right? And because this is Paul's calling, what we are getting from this scripture is that Paul is teaching the purpose of God and his gospel and the fir Paul is teaching the purpose of God and his gospel. And the first thing he teaches us is that God desires to see us. God longs for us. If somebody does not long for you, that person does not have a place in your heart. But God longs for us. There's a place in, 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 in our Lord, our Father, that is reserved for us. He longs for us. When you are in a state of longing in this regard, Christ Jesus, I mean our God, God is in a state of longing. God in, is in a state of longing. So when you are in a state of longing, every emotion in you is at work. When you are in a state of longing, 
every emotion in you is at work. Is at work. It's active and ready to give and receive back that which is giving. It's active and ready to receive. Okay, guys, I'm a bit nervous. I'm a bit nervous, but, the, you know, we, we're going to continue because we need to push through. We need to push through. Where it's difficult, you got to push through. You need to push through. You need to hold yourself and then get back to it. So I'm, I'm getting back to it. Every emotion in you is at work. It's active and ready. That emotion is active and ready to give and receive back that which it is giving. God desires for us to receive him. God has a love so powerful and full, it's undeniable. For I long to see you. You must understand that when, when our Father in heaven longs to see us, there is something great for us that we will be receiving from him. Just from the pure longing of him wanting to see us, we are on the receiving end. See how amazing God is. Like you don't know that you'll be receiving something, but trust, when God longs to see you, there is something that he wants to give you. And we need to understand that we need to make time. We need to create time for God so that we, we discover his longingness to see us. What does it really mean when God says, I long to see you? You will only find out when you yield to him, when you seek him with all your heart, when you worship him with your utmost respect, and when you praise him, when you speak of him, when you speak of his son, Jesus Christ, definitely you will come to a place of seeing why God longs for you. Now, for I long to see you, right? Now, this can be mentally. God could possibly mean, I long to see you, but I long to see you mentally. Longingness to interact mentally with you. He has a longingness to interact mentally with you. God is very intelligent and wise. Okay, so there is a longingness. I've established a couple of um, factors that go along with the longingness or for how long to see you because as I was going through uh, as I was writing my notes I, there was a, a distinguished I, I categorized certain words that that uh, associate with the word longing and obviously in the presence of God and in the things of God there will be wisdom that is needed, that is involved. For us to understand the things of God, we need the wisdom of God. So here God says, I long to see you. And in this regard, God can long to see you mentally. He longs to interact with you mentally. God wants to know your thoughts. God wants to know your thoughts because he cares about your state of righteousness. He longs to protect and build your train of thought. For I long to see you. Now that's the first category. Longingness to interact mentally with you. God wants to know our thoughts because he cares about our state of righteousness. He longs to protect and to build our train of thought. That is the first longing. 
that is very important that we need to understand that with the things of God comes wisdom and thoughts. Thoughts are very powerful. Thoughts become things. Thoughts can manifest. So God wants to know your thoughts. And that why, that's why he says, for I know the thoughts I have for you. You can have your own thoughts, but God knows better. His thoughts are better for you. But he wants to know what's on your mind. He wants to interact with you. I long to see you in that regard. Okay, let's move on. God wants to know your thoughts because we are still continuing on the, on the intellect. God wants to know your thoughts because he cares about your state of unrighteousness. I'm going to say that again. God wants to know your thoughts because he cares about your state of unrighteousness. The very state of righteousness that he cares about, he also cares about the state of unrighteousness. He has a work in your unrighteousness. There is so much work that can be brought to light from unrighteousness. So he does care about those unrighteous thoughts. Because at the end, he wants to show you his right way and not what you think is the right way. For I long to see you. Let's allow God to see us mentally. Let's allow God to see our thoughts. Let's allow God to analyze our thoughts. Let's allow God to take charge of our thoughts, of our train of thinking. Have that space where God can overtake your train of thought. Because once God does that, you are in a state of supernatural. Nothing negative will come from your mouth. Or nothing negative will be in your mind. You are in a state where God has overtaken your thoughts. It's not about you anymore. It's not about what you think it's about what God thinks. It's about what God wants for you. It's about God. Okay, so he longs to see you physically as well. You know, a longingness to be in your presence. For I long to see you, says God. He has a longingness to be in our presence in your presence whoever is watching god has got a longing to see you physically he longs to be in your presence he wants to feel you god wants to feel us guys he wants to feel you are you true in his presence are you true in his presence he longs to see you physically. He wants to see how excellent. He wants you to see how excellent he is to you. He longs to see you. So that you can see how excellent he is. He wants you to see how excellent he is to you it is all for you at the end of the day he is doing it for you he wants to show you his works in your life and what he can do for you he's saying allow me to be in your space physically let me take charge over what is present in your space let me occupy your space physically. Let me be in your presence so that you are able to be in my presence. God is so amazing, guys. He's so amazing. His longingness is all for you. He longs for you. 
It's all for you. He longs to know your every emotion. This is another loneliness. He longs to know your every emotion. He longs to know your every emotion in good and bad. Are you happy in your happy state, in your joyous state, in your sadness? When you succeed and when you fail, he wants to know you in that emotion. He longs to see you in that state. He longs for intimacy. He longs for intimacy with you because by spirit or the principle of the spirit, oh. <laughs> he longs for intimacy with you because by spirit or the principle of the spirit, you are rightfully his. You are rightfully his. He longs for that intimacy. You are his daughter, you are his son. That intimacy is necessary. You are rightfully his. You are his. You are God's. You are his. You are God's. You know, it's like, it's like a loving relationship, like a pure, unconditional, loving relationship. Two people that love each other long for one another every single day. That is a fact. Two people that truly love each other. Unconditionally so. Long for one another every single day, every hour, every moment, every second. That's how deep he longs for us. He wants the whole of you. He wants the whole of you. Just like you're in a relationship, your person wants the whole of you. And you want the whole of him. God wants the whole of you. God wants to show you amazing things. Just by him wanting to see you. He's saying, let me in your space. Let me show you what I can do for you. Allow me to be your train of thought. Allow me to be in your presence. Allow me to take over your emotions. Allow me to be the authority of your life. Because if I drive your thoughts, you are succeeding. If I drive your emotions, you are mature. You are becoming emotionally intelligent where you are somebody who is able to discern, who is able to judge right. Without any impulse. How can I put this? How can I put this? And when I say judge, I don't mean judge in a bad way. I don't mean judge in a bad way. In a bad way. What I, I'm trying to explain is that when God takes over your body, all things are made clear. All things are driven by him. Your emotions, your thoughts, your body, the presence of him in your space is all driven by him. He is your train of thought. And because everything starts in the mind, once God takes charge of your train of thought, everything falls into place. He is in charge. The minute he charges you here, everything follows. You are in charge with God. Renew your mind. It's all in the mind. The power is in the mind. The tongue confesses what's in the mind. 
righteousness should lead. Their thoughts. He longs to see you. And he longs for you spiritually. He longs to see you. He longs for you spiritually. This is deep. This is deeper than. He wants you to see him. For as much as he longs to see you, in that longing, he wants you to see him. The very same way he sees you is the very same way he wants you to see him. He makes it easy for us. He makes it easy for us, guys. How are we not seeing that with God longing to be with us, he makes things easy for us? When we have issues and, and, and you've made that, that, that special place in your heart for him, you go right to that place and you speak with him because you have made a place for him. He longs to see you. He longs to know your emotions. He longs to know your weaknesses, your strengths. He wants to know everything about you. He longs for you spiritually, intimacy, relationship. Who are you in Christ? God is available to us and we need to avail ourselves to him. Sorry guys, the water is running. Yeah, but anyway, um let's continue. Let's continue. Oof. He is available to us and we need to avail ourselves to him. It's a relationship that he longs to build with you. Look at that. Look at that. Th that's all he wants. He wants a relationship with you. He wants to build it. And he wants to build an overall complete relationship with you. He wants to relate with you wants to talk to you he wants to tell you things god is such an amazing god and he's so soft and gentle he wants to relate with you and in turn wants you to relate with him concerning the things of god even concerning your life whether you're born again, whether you're not born again, have that availability for God so that you can get yourself in a state of seeing what God wants to produce out of you. Salvation comes. It is a requirement. You have to be saved. But God does not say, I'm only going to relate with those who are saved. No. No. He relates with everyone. Just like he said earlier on in the scripture that he, he has given the grace and the apostleship to everyone, to all nations. He has given. And to all nations, he will want to give that relation with you. He wants to relate with you. For I long to see you. There's something special about you. There's something so special about you that God took the time to say, I want to get to know Pam. I want to get to know Tando or Sipo or Lerato or, you know, Betty. <laughs> he longs to see you. He wants you to, 
to listen to him. And, and he also wants to listen to you. And in turn, he wants you to relate with him concerning his things. What is going on in your heart? What's going on in your mind? What's going on with your emotions? For I long to see you. He longs to see you in his presence so that you get to know the mysteries of his gospel. He, listen, this is the reward. This is the reward. He longs to see you in his presence so that you get to know the mysteries of his gospel. For I long to see you I long to see you. He longs to see you. He wants to see you. He is here. Avail yourself to him. He's here. He's here. He's saying, I'm here. I long to see you. I'm here. I long to see you. Come to me. I long to see you. He longs to see you in his presence and get to know the mysteries of his gospel. This is a reward. He wants to reward you. I long to see you. Get knowledge. He wants, he longs to see you in his presence so that you get knowledge. So that you know what it means to fear him, to honor him, to worship him, to praise him. God wants you to have it all. Can't you guys see that this is just done for you? It's done for you, but it is for his glory. He stands tall. He stands. He wants you to have it all. He wants you to have him, the whole of him. Experience the whole of him. And he wants to experience the whole of you. He wants you to have him. He's here. And he knows that you want to have him. He knows. All you need to do is just to go to him. Mention him. Make him a part of you. Just like you would in a relationship with your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Make God a part of you. Have a, a loving relationship with God. Long to see him. Want to see him. Desire him. Think about him. This is a relationship. This is a relationship that God longs. He longs to see you. Okay. So today I'm just going to keep it short, guys. Um, okay. He longs to see you. He wants a relationship with you. For I long to see you that I, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gifts. To the end ye may be established. Can you see? Can you see why God longs to see you? He wants to impart some spiritual gifts. So that you may be established. Who wouldn't want that? He's here. He's here, guys. He's here to impart unto you some spiritual gifts so that you are established at the end. Impartation, by definition, is the ability to give. The ability to give. God wants to bless us in the supernatural. Hmm. <laughs> He wants to give us power. He wants to give us power. He wants to give us power so that we can go out there and be his ambassadors and do his will 
and glorify him. That is the power that he wants to give us. He wants us to grow the kingdom of God. Impartation by definition, the ability to give. Let us receive the blessings of the supernatural. For it is given unto you. He wants us to live in power over all unrighteousness. God has got faith in us. God knows that we can live in power. God knows that we can overcome unrighteousness. He believes that. He has faith. <clears throat> Sorry. Just hold on for me quickly. Okay. For this he has chosen to bless us accordingly with the following spiritual gifts. So I'm going to read this to you guys. According to the Bible, this is what it, it, listed, it listed as spiritual gifts. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 10. Now, there are diversities of gifts. There are all types of gifts, but the same spirit. There are all sorts of gifts spiritual gifts but the same spirit there's one function in all those gifts and it's the same spirit there are differences of administrations there are differences of services in the kingdom of heaven the act of putting into action or the act of something there are differences of administration sorry okay sorry guys I, was, uh, I needed to get some water there. <clears throat> so we said there are diversities, all types of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of administration, services in the kingdom of heaven. The act of putting into action or the act of something. Administration. There are differences of administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, the function of something, how things work in the spirit. There are differences or there are different types of operations, diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. I long to see you. But the manifestation of the spirit, what becomes out of the spirit, what becomes out of man, what becomes out of the gift you were given, is given to every man to profit with all. You are given spiritual gift and you are there to profit from them. For one is given by the spirit, the word of wisdom, first spiritual gift, to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit. Those are spiritual gifts. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. Faith is a spiritual gift. To another, faith by the same Spirit. The same Spirit that is of wisdom and knowledge, the gift of wisdom and knowledge, is the same for the gift of faith as well as the gift of healing. It's by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh one and the same self-spirit. 
dividing to every man severity as he will. As much as you can receive. All these gifts work with the same spirit. The same spirit. And all those gifts are divided to all. Sure. You guys are blessed with spiritual gifts. Yes, you, you definitely have a spiritual gift. If you don't know or if you did not know, now you know. All these gifts are supernatural. They're supernatural. They are not normal. They're supernatural. And they are supernatural so that in the end you are established. You you God is trying to tell us that you can be established in the supernatural. And that's where you will be established in the supernatural. That's the perfect establishment. Even though we are not perfect beings. But that's where he wants to perfect you. That's where he wants to establish you in the supernatural. In your gifts. He wants to establish you. So that in the end of your gifting, you are complete and whole. And pleasing to God that you have made him the center of your world. That the gift he has imparted unto you is made of good use. We are useful vessels. All these gifts need to rest in the body of Christ. And it needs Christ followers to carry them. The unrighteous hold the truth. I'm going to come to you guys there. The unrighteous hold the truth. So these gifts can also sit with the unrighteous. They hold the truth. Allow God to use you and be part of his impartation of gifts, of gifts in his kingdom. Allow God to use you and be part of his impartation of gifts in his kingdom. If you want to be established, this is in my closing, guys. If you want to be established, allow God in your space. Receive God and he will receive you back. Receive him well and with understanding and completeness. Work his gift for his good and his kingdom so that when you go out into the world, you speak of him always. And his son, Jesus Christ, who is his glory. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you guys had a good session. I really enjoyed this. Um, <clears throat> it's been a while, so I made a couple of pauses there. But um, with God's timing and preparation, all things, all things will definitely be established. And I'm grateful that God is establishing you. And I'm grateful that I am here to teach you about faith and spiritual gifts and what really God uh, is trying to say to us all concerning faith and the things of God and the spiritual gifts and us being able to work them. So I'm just so pleased and happy that I managed to do this today. And um, we're reading the Bible slowly. We're reading it slowly so that we understand it. And I just pray you guys have a good night. Um, I will see you guys soon. I'll be busy with like short videos there and there. And um, I'll be putting, you know, shots, uh, videos of worship and maybe what's on my mind in the shorts. Um, and yeah, you know, that's how we'll be continuing to interact with each other. I will be, um, <clears throat> I will be going on to teach on different days. I'm still sorting those out, but yeah, we continue, we continue the word. We continue the word by God's grace and by faith 
in Jesus' name. I love you guys all. Good night.